Some have suggested that the racial, economic, and political divides facing our country now are deeper than they have been at any point in the past four or five decades. A new report takes stock of those issues, where we stand now, and as Hari Srinivasan reports, looks at some ideas for bridging those gaps. In the late 60s, after riots and unrest around the country, President Lyndon Johnson created a bipartisan commission to assess what could be done about social injustice and economic inequality. It came to be known as the Kerner Commission. It was controversial and it concluded in February of 1968, quote, our nation is moving towards two societies, one black, one white, separate and unequal. This week marks the 50th anniversary of the commission and a new update is out from the Eisenhower Foundation as well as the last surviving member of the original Kerner Commission. It concludes there has been real progress, such as the expansion of the middle class for blacks and Latinos and the election of many political leaders, including so former President God. Barack so Obama. But it also finds in some ways things have not improved or have worsened since then. We're going to hear more about this from Fred Harris, a former senator and one of the original members of the Kerner Commission. He's the co-author of a new report called Healing Our Divided Society. And Darren Walker, the president of the Ford Foundation, who focuses on a number of these issues. For the record, the foundation is a funder of the NewsHour. Mr. Harris, I want to start with you. Give us a fuller picture of what you think that we have not made so much progress in. Well, we did make a uh progress for about a decade after the Kerner Report came out. But then with the automation and globalization causing jobs to disappear or to move out of the central cities, with the a political change uh, on the conservative side that lowered taxes for the rich and for big corporations at the same time as they were cutting spending that benefited uh, the middle class and uh, poor, poor people. Uh, we began to uh, slow that uh, progress. Then it stopped, and it, since then it's reversed, since about the last part of the 70s. We're resegregating again. There's a worsening discrimination against uh, African Americans and Latinos. Uh, and there's more poor people today than there were 50 years ago. Poor people are poorer. And uh, lastly, the inequality of income is worsening in this country. And we want to get race and, and poverty back on the national agenda. And Darren Walker, what do you think is responsible for that slip backwards, this resegregation, as Mr. Harris says? I think we made great progress for a number of years. But I think the growing inequality that we started to see in the 1980s has exacerbated. And so we now have a twin challenge, the challenge of addressing our historic racial bias that is rooted in our national history and the narrative of slavery, and a new phenomenon, the phenomenon of downward mobility of white Americans. For the first time, we are seeing um, a potential generation of white Americans who are feeling insecure and anxious about their futures. The context matters here, and we have to consider that the context that inequality and what it is doing in this country is making hopelessness and anxiety and a feeling um, that America's future will not be a great future, that in fact our future will be one of haves and have-nots. Mr. Harris, your, your report points out just, uh, of course, the general statistics that sometimes we're familiar with about uh, median household income for whites is around $65,000 and for blacks it's around $39,000. But you go way back even earlier when it comes to children and poverty, that we've actually have now more American children living in poverty today. It's up. Uh, it's up to 21 percent now, where it was only uh, about 15 percent in 1968. That's true. I think uh, you can really judge a nation's priorities by looking at how, how they treat children. And it's just a scandal that we have this uh, growing child poverty in this country. You know, uh, we know what needs to be done. We know what works. We need just to, to build the wheel to get it done. Mr. Walker, how do you address these different issues 
uh, in a bipartisan or nonpartisan way, where we see in this political climate, we're seeing a retrenchment of kind of party lines getting stronger and thicker? Well, first of all, I think it's important to not be uh, demoralized by the current state, because in fact, we saw progress. It's important, because there are some who would say all of these investments were for naught. That is not true. We made tremendous strides in reducing poverty and reducing segregation in this country. Today, we need to have people understand that we all, all Americans, black, white, and brown, are suffering from the same the, the same plague, and that is the plague of inequality. And for us to make progress, we have to show white, black, and brown Americans that we are all in this together. We need our leaders to be builders of bridges between communities and to recognize that this nation needs healing, that we need to come together. Well, Fred Harris, how, how do you figure out a way forward? based on some of the successes that we had in the past, some of the things that did work, what were the ingredients for that formula, and how do we re-inject that? We know uh, jobs work, education. We know that uh, well, one thing that uh, we know from the past is that people have to work together. One of the great men of this country right now, I think, is the Reverend William Barber of North Carolina, leader of a new Poor People's Campaign. And he says, we've got to... Uh, quit uh, existing and fighting in our in our separate silos labor over here and civil rights uh, activists over here we're all in this thing together and he's demonstrated that you can put t people together around things like uh, livable wage and, and around jobs and around equality no matter what a person's zip code or or gender or race is. So, Darren Walker, so what, what is the source of inspiration when you look through this report? What are you seeing as kind of a roadmap for future success? Well, what I see actually success being uh, characterized by recognizing the importance of technology in our future. Uh, technology was not mentioned in the Kerner report, and today there is nothing more important. There is no uh, feature of our uh, society that will determine opportunity more than technology. The internet will be uh, a platform for opportunity or a platform for, for further uh, inequality. So we've got to focus on making sure that all Americans have access to the internet, that we're able to not uh, replicate on, uh, on the internet and the digital world the prejudice and injustice that we have in the analog world. So I believe that uh, a key uh, unlocking of opportunity in the future and a, and, and a way to address some of these issues is by focusing on technology. All right, Darren Walker of the Ford Foundation and Fred Harris, one of the original members of the Kerner Commission. Thank you both. Thank you.